Hi, good people of the world. I hope you're having an awesome day. Now, what I'm going to show you today is how Leif found a way to paint this. A couple of years ago, I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright, let's get cracking. So, this is the T-Rex from Nolser's Marvelous Miniatures. It's, um, the base is 3 inches by 3 inches, and, uh, yeah, it's a big, big model. Looking at the art, I quickly saw that it looked very bland, in my opinion. Very sort of just monotone red and, and brown, and I knew I wanted to do something else, something a little bit more elaborate. Looking at the model, it, it had quite a lot of seam lines, quite a lot of sort of cracks and stuff. And I'm trying out to uh, trying to put the tail on, and it's very very snug. Uh, so I decided to actually come in with some files and just sort of try to file down um, that end, so it. it got a little bit more of a better fit and as you can see there's a lots of mode lines all over this model to be honest and and for me the important thing is to remove that obvious sort of clear straight sort of line uh, after some additional filing, I eventually got, uh, with some finish might, uh, I got uh, the, the tail to sort of be a good fit, which meant that, you know what, next steps is to glue this tail on. Now you saw that the tail still left uh, a crack there, so I knew that this model with all of the cracks in the legs and whatnot and the tail, uh, it would need a little bit of a McLovin after, you know, gluing all of it together. And that meant Millipot. So I'm just taking uh, some piece of Millipot, it's an epoxy potty that you need to mix 50-50 uh, of both components and the way I do it I sort of um, you know try to make long thin strands of it that I put over the seam line and then I use some uh, sculpting tools or modeling tools and lots of water because the idea here is that you want the putty to almost become semi-liquid so it sort of seeps into the cracks and ideally it shouldn't sort of detract any details from the actual model. So with that uh, I decided also to eventually glue it uh, on the base and uh, unlike uh, last week's uh, uh, boxes of shame this one actually uh, fit on its base but as per usual when it comes to Leif I of course did too much uh, putty or too much millipot so I, I decided to try to sort of uh, do a bevel for the ground on the base with the rest of the millipot so we're gonna leave that to dry and uh, this is what it looks like once it, it has actually dried up so what I wanted to do was to come in with some PVA glue and just do a very, uh, very sort of simple basing on it. I'm gonna just cover all of the seam lines uh, on the base between the millipot and the actual model with PVA glue. And then I'm gonna come in with uh, some sort of uh, sand, gravel, and it has a little bit larger rocks there. It the colors doesn't matter because we're gonna be priming all of this. Now I also came in with some additional PVA glue afterwards. Um, I'm like, like you can see, I'm actually using my dirty water there and just diluting um, the actual PVA glue, just to sort of cover everything. This, uh, once it dries, it makes you know a very strong bond, and you you can be sure that you will not have any sort of loose rocks. And this is what it looks like uh, after it's uh, dried, so uh, I think it's ready to be primed at this point, to be honest. 
And this is what it looks like primed. I think I used uh, probably some sort of off-white, perhaps bone uh, wraith citadel. I, I honestly don't know. I just took something. I knew I wanted something uh, bright because I'm going to be using inks for this. And as you can see, all of the seam lines are actually gone. So I'm very happy about that and we didn't lose any details so i'm coming in with some yellow ink from uh, green stuff world their intensity in inks and i'm also taking a couple of drops of uh, sepia i think that was and i'm giving that a good mix because what i'm after is sort of um more brown orangey sort of uh, tone and when I started painting this, I had looked at quite a lot of different sort of, uh, well, I, I can't really say reference photos, but more concept art for different dinosaurs. And I knew I wanted to come in and make this, uh, this T-Rex pop. I did want to be more inspired by sort of Jurassic Park, uh, the, the sort of, what is it, the second or the third T-Rex that has a lot more colorations. So. Throughout this paint scheme, you'll notice how I'm almost moving in... Um, it looks like I'm moving in random, but I'm almost always moving the brush going from the back of a dinosaur or from the bottom and up and down. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to create a pattern of the sort of stripes and whatnot. So I'm coming in with the lightest color now uh, and sort of just creating that mid... Uh, to light tone uh, at first, just to sort of get a little bit uh, my my bearings. And I think this next ink is called Swamp Brown. Uh, it's a little bit more sort of red-ish brown. And I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm essentially putting it on, I guess you would say the top of the previous coat so i'm just trying to get a little bit more uh, of a warm color uh, in the in the sort of gradient giving it that nice it goes from sort of red dark brown to sort of a little bit more lighter now once i had some left and this is all experimental i did not plan this i'm putting in some drops of uh, black ink to make a sort of uh, very very dark uh, murky brown and I knew I wanted this on the top because this is the funny thing I've mentioned this before but when it comes to animals usually they have very dark colors on top and and light colors at the bottom which sort of goes against the whole sort of light coming from top so i'm really thinking about how an animal usually is textured and here i'm you can see that i'm starting to pick out the ridge of the back and here i'm also coming in and starting to define those stripes that i knew i wanted to have uh, i wanted to have some sort of uh, in my opinion uh, i i think this is sort of uh, i'm rationalizing this as it's some sort of camera flush similar to how tigers or, or different animals would have and I'm coming back in with some yellow this time around I'm mixing it uh, I'm putting a, a little bit of green in a separate pot and I'm basically taking these three inks that I have now and I'm, you can see that I'm mixing it in the middle one and I'm liking what I see there but I wanted a, a dash more green I'm looking almost for a I guess you would call it a sort of almost a lime green color uh, and it, it might sound wrong but what I'm doing here is I'm going at the bottom and I'm really coming in so you have to think about the bottom was uh, in a sort of yellowish uh, light brown color so I'm gonna go from that to the sort of off warm white uh, undercoating so it will become almost a little bit more sort of yellow green but a very faint yellow green uh, but i'm liking what i'm seeing so far with the fades and so on and then i have to really say that painting with inks is quite wonderful i i urge you to try it out so here you can see where we're going with this um, now, uh, I came in with some Blood Terror Red, the contrast paint, trying to sort of uh, paint out some of the fleshy details in the mouth. Um, and I'm doing this for, uh, for a while, and then for some reason, I can't remember why, I chose to sort of 
stop midway. Uh, I think I was a little bit unsure of the redness of it. Uh, so here I'm coming in with some uh, black ink and uh, a little bit of brown. I wanted to just sort of create a very uh, base layer on the on the actual base. So uh, first a little bit more uh, brown and, and black, which creates sort of a gray. Here I'm mixing on the wet palette a little bit of uh, brown ink and a little bit of glaze. I'm doing this because I, I really wanted to thin it, thin it out. I didn't want it to be very significant here. I'm trying to sort of paint in the shadow, shadow areas and any area where I thought that the previous coat was a little bit too bright. So I'm working a little bit on a face and then, you know what, I had some over so I used that on the base to create a little bit more earthy tones. Uh, you, you'll notice that that I always roll at the punches and try to use as much of the uh, paint as possible. Uh, for the pedicure, uh, I'm coming in with some black, uh, just flat black uh, acrylic paint. And then back to the mouth and the flesh uh, terror red. Uh, I'm basically uh, that sort of membrane or whatever you can call it uh, on his uh, in his mouth. And here I'm not being very... Uh, sort of accurate with my paint. You can see that it looks like he's actually bitten down on something and blood has squirted all over the place. And that's fine. Uh, while that's drying, I'm coming in with some off-white uh, on the eyes. And take your time doing this. Ideally, I would say that what you want is a bright sort of white, but around it you want to maintain that sort of black line. Now that dries fairly quickly, so I, I put in the pupils as well with just some flat black, and this is what we have so far. Uh, now, <laughs> you remember what I said about being economical with your paints? I had some of that uh, sepia ink, and I also had some white on the wet palette. Well, you know what? I'll mix those two and create sort of a bone color. So here I'm coming in on the mouth and I'm just sort of trying to hit all of the teeth uh, with this sort of uh, bone colored uh, homemade paint, if you will. Uh, and here I'm also making sure to leave a little bit of space in between the teeth, leave a little bit of the red. Uh, you'll read it as the gum of the, the, the T-Rex. I'm using that same yellow ink. Um, it's from Green Stuff World, but you can use any any yellow ink really. I'm using that to tint the uh, color of the eyes because uh, I knew I didn't want them to be uh, white and um, black and white, but more sort of yellow. And here I'm coming in with some sepia, and I'm just sort of trying to essentially doing a, a, a colored wash, I guess, over the teeth. Because, of course, his teeth should, uh, you know, dental care in the Jurassic period. It wasn't what it is today. And for that uh, sort of uh, the membranes or whatever you can call it in his teeth uh, or in his mouth, I came in with some uh, flesh uh, paint just to sort of do some highlights. And then back on the teeth with some, uh, this time uh, almost pure off-white, just doing the tips of it because now we've defined that shadow in the teeth. And then also I did a little bit of uh, flesh uh, highlights on, on the actual mouth. Here I'm coming in with some grey to highlight uh, all of the claws. And uh, yeah, it's looking kind of good, I have to say, at this point. I'm, I'm really getting inspired by this, so I thought at this point, you know, am I done? What can I do? And then I remembered, I bought a shit ton of different sort of, uh, you know, farm animals. So I, I had a goat and I painted it, uh, the horns with some agarus dunes and then I thinned it out and it created a little bit of shadows and a little bit of sort of dirt uh, at the bottom. I uh, took uh, a match uh, and uh, or a matchstick and I did sort of a simple pole and I took some uh, strings, I glued the goat into place, glued the string into place, some grass tufts, and uh, it's time to see what, what it ended up with. Okay, good people. 
this is the end result. I am super happy with this paint job actually and I hope you like that little homage with the goat. Anyone who uh, doesn't understand that uh, reference, uh, shame on you for being young I guess. You should see the first Jurassic Park. All right, good people. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, uh, share it. If you, what do you think about the paint scheme? You know what? Put a little comment down there. Let me know what you thought. Also, if you really like the videos I'm putting out every week, please consider, you know, hit that subscribe button for us. It really helps the channel out when you do. And with that, I wish you all a great day. Toodaloo.